Hi folks, we're in our next part of the series of the Word of God in your life, let's come before the Lord. Lord, we ask for your forgiveness and mercy and grace today. And Lord, we give you the praise and the glory and the honour. Father, I just pray that you would bless the proclamation of your Word today. Pray that all of us would receive a blessing from you. I ask this, Father, in your name, Lord, and I ask for the anointing, and I pray that, Lord, your Word would be sealed in our hearts today. In Jesus' name, Amen. Come, Lord, I pray by thy Holy Spirit for your help and power. Amen. So there's going to be a great apostasy and we mustn't get discouraged by that. We've got to open our eyes. Then if you turn to Acts chapter 18, 24. <clears throat> Acts chapter 18, verse 24. It says, now a certain Jew named <coughs> Apollos, born at Alexandria, <coughs> excuse me, an eloquent man, and mighty in the scriptures, came to Ephesus. The man had been instructed in the way of the Lord, <coughs> excuse me, being fervent in spirit, he spoke and taught accurately the things of the Lord, though he knew only the baptism of John. Isn't that amazing? Now a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria, an eloquent man, a mighty in the scriptures, came to Ephesus. We've got to be mighty in the scriptures, folks. That's what we've got to do. We've got to be mighty in the scriptures. The Ap Apollos was a man who was steeped in the word of God. And that's where we've got to start moving. As Christian leaders, we've got to be people of the book, studying the book regularly. And as Christians, we've got to be people of the book. Have we got a systematic daily reading plan of the Bible have we got a, a study plan of the Bible okay but what I like about Apollos he knew he knew a lot but listen to this look at verse 26 Acts chapter 18 verse 26 so he began to speak boldly in the synagogue and when Aquila and Priscilla heard him they took him aside and explained to him the way of God more accurately so he was well learned in, in the teaching of John <clears throat> and he was mighty in the scriptures, but he didn't know everything. So these people came to him and said, Look, you don't really know fully about Jesus' teaching. And Apollos was humble enough to learn. There's a lesson there, folks. All of us have got to be willing to learn, okay? Every one of us has to be willing to learn. We never fully arrived. You've got to be willing. I go to... Um, I teach the Bible, that's my profession, I love to teach the Word of God, okay? But I go and I listen to a pastor and I hear the Word of God from a pastor, okay? In other words, even though I teach the Bible and, and I'm a Bible teacher, I still need to learn from somebody else, okay? And it's the, that, that's the way it goes. We've all got to be willing to learn. So if you're a young person and you resist in learning, then that's not a good place to be. You've got to be humble and, and, and listen to your youth worker. But if you're a youth worker and you think you know a bit more than the pastor, then you, you're being proud. You've got to be willing to learn from your pastor and, and what your pastor's been teaching from, from the Bible. Okay. And if you're a pastor and you're teaching, you've got to be willing to learn. Maybe from someone from your congregation. Maybe there's someone in your congregation who might say something and you've got to be willing to be corrected okay so in other words we need to be steeped in the word of God but we've also got to be willing to be humble and learn from each other okay then if you turn to 1 John chapter 2 verse 27 <clears throat> 1 John one John chapter 2 verse 27 it says but the anointing which you have received from him abides in you and you do not need that any one teach you but as the same anointing teach you concerning all things that is true and it is not a lie and just as he has taught you you will abide in him but the anointing which you have received from him abides in you okay every Christian has an anointing from God and the Holy Spirit will teach every Christian the Word of God. 
That doesn't mean to say we don't need pastors and preachers and teachers. We need them. But at the end of the day, it's a one-on-one -on -one between you and God. And, and God's going to teach you by His Holy Spirit. So you've got to, when you're studying the Bible, the way to make the Bible live in your life, I'm just looking at the time, to make the Bible live in your life, depend on the Holy Spirit. Let Him be your teacher. Say, Lord, when you're studying the Bible, say, Lord, please open my eyes and teach me your word. And depend on the Holy Spirit to teach you, okay? Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 18. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 18. Therefore you shall lay up these words of mine in your heart and in your soul, and bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be a frontlets between your eyes. You shall teach them to your children, speaking of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. And you shall write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates, that your days and the days of your children may be multiplied in the land of which the Lord swore to your fathers to give them, like the days of the heavens above the earth. The word of God, folks, has got to be taught to children and to the whole family. Okay, And I think this is one of the reasons why we're losing a lot of people in the church a lot of young people is because we're not teaching them the Bible so when they go to college or university they haven't got a background to be able to stand against the assaults that they're getting so you know some way in your family not to ram it down your family's throat you've got to be careful and wise but in some way you've got to try and get the Bible and teach it to your family and the children in the church. You've got to go through uh, a Sunday school program with your young people where you're teaching them systematically the Bible. If you go um, on the Metropolitan Tabernacle um, in London, if you type in uh, Dr. Peter Masters uh, Metropolitan Tabernacle Elephant and Castle, uh, there's a website there of the church and they have a bookshop and they sell books on Sunday school material and there's a uh, books that you can get by Jill Masters published by Wakeman and they have a Sunday school program where they teach people the Word of God and you can get those books they're quite cheap and you can get the illustrations and material uh, that's one area where you can begin to start teaching people in Sunday school and youth work program of going through the Bible now a lot of churches have abandoned children's work for uh, child protection issues and all the rest of it because it's too stringent these days. But I've got to say that as a church you need to consider and get back into doing your Sunday school work. Because the people in your town, in your village, in your city, need the children need to know the Bible. So I would encourage you as pastors and leaders to get your Sunday school up and running again to get your youth work program up and running and to get in that program a teaching program where you're teaching the Bible in a lively vibrant way whatever way you want to do it but some way you're teaching the young people and children this is the only way we're going to grow and be strong as churches if we give our young people and children a good foundation in the Word of God okay so pray about it and, and ask the Lord to guide you about it but go forward in this area and in your own marriage in your own marriage situation you need time where as a couple you're studying the Word of God individually and together you need times as a family where you study the Bible or pray together reading the Bible so bring the Bible into family worship it's important to do that it will keep you strong as a couple and it will help your family to, to be strong in the future don't ram it down your wife's throat or your husband's throat or your children's throat but gently uh, try and bring the Bible in it needs the Bible from you needs to go into your community your family your church your children your young people your marriage that's where we need to be heading so please pray about it and move forward on this it's really important 
Psalm 119. Okay, well, we'll go to Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 says the book of the law shall not depart from your mouth but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written for then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success so Joshua was telling God was telling the people through Joshua that we that they've got to be thinking about the Bible day and night and as a young Christian or as a Christian the, the only way that you're going to grow, that you're going to master sin in your life, that you're going to prosper in, 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 in your life and, 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 and know God's blessing, is if you build good foundations. That's the only way. And the only way to do that is by immersing your life in the Bible. So have a time of where the Bible's with you in the morning, where the Bible's with you in the evening. Try and memorize scripture verses. Okay? And, and and fill your life with the word of God. And I promise you, you'll see a big change in your life. You'll see a big change in your ministry if you do that. So, we've come to the end of that section. I hope it was a blessing to you. We're going to be on the next section now uh, in the next video. So, thank you for listening and take care.